Riverlands Brewing Company in St. Charles, Illinois. It is a anniversary. Or is that an anniversary? Yes, because it begins with a vowel. Uh, an anniversary. Three years since these bunch of reprobates here and me uh, <laughs> brewed this fantastic barley wine, which I'm gonna bring in. Wicked Googly. Now, I know you guys, oh, I guess I should introduce you first of all. So the collaborators on this beer are Mr. Ken McMullen from Hot Vine Brewing. Buenos dias. Mr. Eric Bramwell from Riverlands Brewing. Hey everybody. Mr. Nick Font Fonte. Fonte. Fonte, I got it right. There's no little thing over it though. There's no little thing over it. <laughs> no. It's so, yeah, okay. <laughs> Nick Fonte from Riverlands Brewing and me, Phil Clark from Brewing from the Britain Yankee Craft Beer Podcast. So, three years ago, well actually it was about three and a half years ago because we wanted to brew a barley wine, right. and we said, hey, who could we get to brew a barley wine? And you guys were about, you thought that would be a good idea because you had to come, right? It was, it was a new style to me, either professional or home brewing. I had never made one before, and I thought that sounded like a fun challenge. All right, and you were here as well to help mash out because that's normally what he does but now he's, <laughs> now he's brewing all right i tell you he's a good brewer <laughs> thank you and ken was there to supervise because when we do collaborations what happens to the second person they basically don't do much i stood around asking beer. questions right. but yeah. <laughs> uh, it's more fun to be the guest at a collaboration yes. than the host for sure but you did encourage them to do i think it was a four hour boil it was it was three or four yeah it was it was in that range though it, it, it was definitely an extended boil from from our normal 60. so i'm going to go ahead and open this up and we're just going to check out and see how this has aged if it's aged well this has been a bottle that's been down in my basement pub britain yankee pub for three years i've had it on the shelf i put it into the fridge uh i don't know a week ago or so so you know, it's a consistent temperature in there. I'm going to open this up over here. I don't have a pour cam today, so I'm just going to do this. Sorry if I'm in the front of someone, but there we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Opened up. And I'll do the first pour here, and then we'll go around and pour. Got the wonderful Riverlands uh, glassware. Here we go. Oh my goodness me, is this coming out a wonderful color. Nicely, of course, on Riverlands, they have wavy lines so we can get everybody an even one look at the color of that that is a fantastic light mahogany beautiful bright golden brown what would you call it guys yeah i'd say it's a nice rich amber color i'm just happy it didn't start gushing when you open it I mean, <laughs> our, uh, our, san our sanitation <laughs> procedure was was good and i think that you actually um took some of this and put it into a barrel. We did? We did, yeah. So with this one, um, we put it in freshly emptied barrels that contained, I think it was our very first barrel age stout. That was, was, yeah, yeah, we put it in the first the barrels, yeah. yeah. So they were second use barrels, uh, first, you know, they were bourbon barrels first and then emptied and then we put an imperial stout in it. And then we emptied that, and then we put Wicky Googly in there. It was interesting because we did get a little bit of bourbon character. We did get a little bit of the stout character. So didn't you add? Cool. Didn't you add something to it to make it an old-fashioned? We yeah, because it was an old-fashioned Googly. So, so you added what to it? Uh, it was orange? sherry and orange, I believe. Was sherry? Orange. Because it didn't pick yeah. up a ton of barrel character since the stout that was in there first took most of that for itself, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it had a nice character to it, but we thought it wasn't necessarily going to stand on its own without giving it a little something interesting. So, all right. Well, I've swelled this one and smelt it, and it smells fantastic. Dan, have you tasted it yet? I have not. 
Well, let's all get in there and have a quick taste. There'll be a short break whilst we make some thoughts in our mind. <laughs> Well, that's kind of what so I thought. Yeah. <laughs> All together now. Ooh. <laughs> it's, uh, so, what happened with this? Nick, hang on, let's yeah. see what Nick sure. thinks. Well, I'm delighted that the carb is still there. <laughs> <laughs> Three years and there's still carbon, that's nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the, uh, the caramel uh, notes have really come through on this. Really kind of uh, set in nicely. And I think with barley wine, you can, barley wine is really, and it's off here, normally. And this is an English barley wine, right? Yes? Yeah, yeah. it says that on You there. can talk, it's, it can hear you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> after, we did, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after all the podcasts we've done, you don't think you'd know to talk, wouldn't you? Did, did I nod? <laughs> yes, okay, well, in this video, you can know, they can see you know. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. 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 I, I think it, it, there's some oxidation that's happened, which normally, when you hear oxidation, you know, you think of it in terms of IPA or something, and it's something that, you know, is a scary word, but in something like this, oxidation actually can bring out some interesting and, and desirable flavors, like some of those caramel and toffee flavors are, are brought a little more forward with a, a little bit of that oxidized flavor. Right. Um, without, it, it, I, when I say that, it's almost like a, a pleasing sherry note and not that, like, wet cardboard that right. you want to avoid. Um, I think if we had, well, if we, well, I could have done this. If we put wax on the top, would that have reduced the oxidation? I, I don't think so. I think there's always a little bit of oxygen in there. So I don't think that the oxygen that we're tasting came from getting through the cat. No. Okay. I think it was already in the bottle. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I got a little bit on the nose. Mm -hmm. I don't get too much in the taste. Mm -hmm. um, I get all of coffee, mm -hmm. but I also get like a, like a dried fruit, um, almost raisin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just, this is just delicious. Well, I think, yeah, I, I think it turned out really well. And uh, I think, Ken, you still have a few bottles left for sale over at Hotline. Yeah. So if you want to get a three-year-old one, uh, I'm sure you can go down to Hotline and see Ken, who will take care of you. Um, guys. This is uh, three years of fun, because yep. I've had one of these every year for three years. Now, <laughs> uh, when are we going to do the next one? <laughs> I won't hey, hold them to I'll, I'll bring one. I'll bring one next yep. year. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> the fourth year. So um, this is just a small video uh, to uh, tell you that our barley wine show, our annual barley wine show, we're going to release a video and we'll probably do an audio version of it as well. That's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks, so keep your eyes open for it. These guys are not in it. Well, Ken is, but they're not. But hey, you know, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. to a wicked googly. By the way, look it up on Google. Not wicked Google, wicked googly. <laughs> <laughs>